Hi guys, and welcome to episode 34 of the Stringing It Together podcast. My name is Becky, and I'm coming to you as almost always from Frankfurt, Germany, where I live with my two furry cats. Uh, yeah, so it's nice to be back with you guys today. Today will definitely be a short episode because I do not have very much time to record. Um, but yeah, also not like a ton of content, but I am trying to stick to my schedule and be here about every two weeks. So yeah, nailing it right now, nailing it. Drinking some iced coffee while well, it's an iced Americano before a very long dress rehearsal this evening. So yes, uh, let's see, social media, <laughs> I always almost forget this, popping that up on the screen where you can find me. Also, I usually forget to mention our Ravelry group, which is the Stringing It Together Ravelry group, which will be linked below. Uh, yeah. And over on the Ravelry group right now, we do have a knit along going for the door smiths that is closing soon. That will be finishing up on um, the 31st. And today is like the 25th, 24th? 24th, I think. So uh, pretty soon. So if you are joining us, be sure to get over there and put your FOs in the FO thread. And yes, uh, very small cow this time around, but that's fine. Um, I'm really happy to see a couple of new door smiths going out into the world. Um, sorry, it's kind of noisy outside. I have the window open. It's been really humid. So, yeah, need a little bit of a breeze. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, so one thing that I do definitely have to talk about is that um, last time I told you that the After the Rain socks and kits would be going live on the 19th that has been moved. I did talk about this on Instagram. I'm sorry if you missed that. I hope you didn't. Um, but I didn't get any like angry messages, so I hope everyone saw it who was interested. We ended up pushing the release back a week for a number of reasons that aren't very interesting, but it was just better all around. Um, so yes, the After the Rain socks, which you can see here, <laughs> um, the kids are going live on Saturday the 26th at 10 a.m. Eastern time, which is 4 p.m. here in Germany, so Central Time, Central European Time. Uh, so it's 3 p.m., right? Yeah, 3 p.m. in like London, UK area. You can check for you when that is. They'll be going up on onceuponacorgi.com and they will include the yarn, which is a hundred grams of this green colorway, which is called Fiddleheads, 20 grams of the, the peachy pink, which is called Puppy Pals, I think, Gabby named it. Um, and it's a Corydale nylon blend, which is totally amazing. And then the pattern, of course, and um, I finally got my Hannah's adorable little beaded umbrella. I will put in a closer close up of that um, so that you can see it. It's so cute. Um, so yeah, those kits will be going up on Saturday and the pricing for them is 52 US dollars plus shipping. Um, we had a conversation about that because last time we did a collaboration for the Volk Volca Socks, um, the pricing was significantly less um, because the raw materials cost for Gabby and Hannah was less and we had, you know, a conversation on whether to lower the price. Um, but we decided not to. I also talked about this in my newsletter a little bit that went out today. Um, there's been more discussion going on about, well, the price of knitting patterns and I didn't change the, my standard sock pattern price, but you know, we sort of talked about it and then I said, no, you know, you guys deserve to get paid well for your work and that's just what we decided so I hope um, I hope the kids do well and I hope that price point is reasonable to people who want to get their hands on them uh, so yeah that's the story with those so I'm sorry about the delay if anyone is waiting um, but they are coming better than ever with less stress all around for us so yes um, Good, so let's move on to what I've been working on. And I don't have any finished, finished objects, but I do have a half finished object, which is a sock, um, which I knit out of Hannah of the Corner of Crafts yarn. I don't even know if I 
said that, that she made the stitch marker. But I know I've said it before, and if you've watched my podcast before, you probably know about Hannah, because we talk about each other all the time. Um, okay. Putting this on here. Didn't weave in that end. So here is the first sock. It is done. I did a fairly long leg on these. Did my new depths heel as usual. Oh, I forgot to mention that the new depths heel comes with the after the rain socks pattern. It comes with all of my sock patterns and it's available individually. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Self promotion over. Okay. Um, so that one's done. And then I started the next one. And there's where I am on that. So yeah, again, this was a early colorway that Hannah dyed. And um, as far as I know, it's not repeatable, but um, just an amazing example of her work. I'm really loving working with it. There's some really bright um, pops of yellow that come through or pops of red. And yeah, it's really nice. So this has been keeping me company because I've not had a whole ton of brain space in my knitting world or any part of my life recently. Um, it's been, there's been some stressful stuff going on. So it's been nice to have a vanilla sock and they're finally getting some love. So yes. Um, I feel like I'm talking really fast, but I have time. I have a little bit of time. Not a lot of time. Uh, anyway, um, next up, I was kind of hoping to have this finished but it didn't happen. My, what's it called? Tambourine Cardigan by Julia Farwell Clay from Pom Pom. Um, yeah, I think I mentioned last time that I went away for about five days and I decided not to bring this with me because it was just in like so many different sort of states of completion and I didn't want to really have to like do seaming and stuff like that when I was away. So, well, first of all, the sleeves are done. So, both sleeves, I'm pretty sure they're long enough anyway. Both of them are completed. And where I'm at with the body is, I'm still, it's very hard to show. It's a bottom-up um, cardigan. So, like, here's, here's the right front here. And I'm still working on the back. It's almost long enough. It has to be as long as the side here. And then I believe I will seam these stitches together. Yeah, the other front is also done like that. So I think, or seam, I think I'll just graft them together or whatever, like that. If that's, if you can sort of see that. This isn't lying very flat. And then I, We'll do the neckline ribbing, and then I have to go back and pick up for the button bands. Well, and then sew the, the sleeves on, however that works. But um, And this was, the button bands is a um, modification that I decided to make because I read on a lot of Ravelry um, pages that the button bands didn't lay flat at all for people. So, um, because they were originally knit um, into the, into the, um, like vertically into the pattern. <laughs> I don't know. I think you know what I mean. So you, it wasn't written to go back and pick them up, but that's what I'm going to do. Um, so yeah. So again, I want to get it done just to kind of have it done, but, um, it's been sort of a crazy thing to work on on the go, and I have just had a really, really busy week at work and feel like I've been living on the train. So it hasn't gotten that much love, but um, it's pretty close to being finished. So yeah, I'm excited for that, even though I won't be able to wear it anytime soon because it's summer now. So there's that. And what should I talk about next? Um, I did a little bit of design swatching, um, most of which was generally unsuccessful in the past week, so I won't really go into that. Um, and I did actually, I said I wasn't going to, but I did do a little swatch for the um, Sahel 
uh, that's what it's called. Yeah, the Sahel uh, tank top that's in Breeze that I talked about last time. Um, I'm gonna have to re-swatch. This is still too big, unbelievably. Uh, I think that the pattern called for like a three millimeter needle or maybe even larger, like a 3.25 millimeter. And I knew that, cause I've swatched with this yarn before. This is Lino Muka, which is a 100% linen yarn. This is a different color, but just so you can see the, the tag. That's put out by Bolin in Berlin, the yarn store there. And um, I bought this last summer and yeah, had a really hard time getting gauged for any pattern I was looking at. So I think I knit this on a 2.5 millimeter and I have to go down. So I might have to knit it on a two millimeter, which is a US zero, which is sort of insane to knit a garment out of that, right? But I might do it. I think it would be really lovely in this color. I'm going to swatch and see. Um, but again, that's not super high on my priority list right now. I have some other things that I need to accomplish, but um, I just sort of couldn't resist swatching for that because I really like want it. I really want to have that. And the only other thing I've been working on is a new cast on, and it's something very exciting. And I've actually put a quite a large dent into it in a small amount of time. Um, I took this with me when I went to Gerlitz and then to Munich and um, hilariously brought the wrong needles. Well, it wasn't really funny. I was mad. I, I thought I had the correct needle size and I didn't. Um, so I sat on a train for six hours kicking myself that I couldn't start knitting this. And then I got to, where did I change? I changed trains in Dresden. And I looked up and saw that there was a craft store um, about a 10 minute walk from the train station and I had a 30 minute transfer. So I power walked to this craft store and they had three different brands of needles and were out of the size I needed in all three brands. Like every other size literally was stocked except for the one I needed. So I was like, ah. So yeah. And then my friend said that they were in a craft stores in Gerlitz but there was one, which I saw a couple days later when I was walking to the train station, popped in there, grabbed some Addy needles, which are not my favorite, but I was just so happy to have them. So then I was finally able to cast this on. And this is a beta knit. Um, so it's not exactly a test knit. Um, I don't know if it's been test knit previously, but it has, the pattern has been already heavily tech edited. It's a pattern for the fiber company. Um, and yeah, when I went to, um, uh, what was it called, H&H &H in Cologne, uh, I went to the fiber company's booth and talked to them and uh, they asked me if I would be interested in being involved in this program and I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> so yeah, basically um, they are, and you might have seen this on some other podcasts, like Ellie of Skein Deer is doing it, um, Hanaliza is doing one as well. So I'm knitting a sweater from their upcoming Barrowdale collection, which is set to be released in the fall. And it's out of a brand new yarn, which is called Lore. Um, I will show you the, the cake I'm currently working from. Do, 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 do. And to tell you a little bit about this yarn, it is, this, I'm just reading from what it says on the pattern. Processed in a mill in England's historical textile region of West Yorkshire, Lore is made of 100% lamb's wool from the Romney sheep breed. It is an honest wool, wool and spun DK weight yarn that blooms into a beautiful knitted fabric, perfect for everyday knits. We name this yarn Lore to honor the stories we create with wool. Great stories happen to those who knit them. So yeah, it's really beautiful. It's rustic and sheepy, um, which, as you know, I love, but it really softened up. My swatch softened, softened up a bit um, after I washed it. And I know that I'm allowed to talk about this and I'm allowed to show you my progress. I am not allowed to show you any of the um, photography that has been done for the collection yet. And I will not be able to show you the finished object until it is released. Um, but it is a pullover. It is called Lodor and it's by Berenger uh, Kayao. Uh, gosh, wow. Okay, I hope I said that right, but I will put her name on the screen. It's awesome. Um, it's bottom up, and I hope, yeah, it's in an okay state to show you. I have it on stitch holders because I need the needles for my 
for my um, tambourine, but this is what I have so far. So yeah, I did all of this in just a little over a week. So yeah, it's it's really memorizable and kind of potato chippy and goes really fast. I do have to separate kind of soon for the for the armholes. So uh, I put that on hold because I I want to do that at home, not on the train where I have to kind of read a bunch of instructions and stuff. Especially because I'm not used to doing bottom up construction. But yeah. It's really pretty. I really love the color. Um, I love the pattern so far. So yeah, I will of course show you more of this as it develops, but um, yeah, I almost feel guilty in a way that I knit so much of this so fast uh, so that I maybe won't talk in it, about it on as many podcast episodes, but I know I have until like mid-July to finish it. Um, so yeah, it was nice to get a solid dent in it right off the bat. So yeah, I love this and I'm super grateful to the fiber company and my friend Claire who works at the fiber company for choosing me to participate in this program. And yeah, I will keep you guys posted. I mean, there are so many beautiful um, garments and accessories in this collection that I had a really hard time kind of nailing down which colors I was interested in doing, which patterns I was interested in doing. And um, there's at least one other garment in there that I really think I'm definitely going to make because I totally adore it. So yes, sorry, I need to check the time one more time. Okay. Um, yeah, so that is all I've been working on. I have not touched sewing. So my dress I was working on literally have not touched it since last we spoke. Um, haven't had time, haven't had the energy. That's okay. It's okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for making um, life. Like I said, um, and you will have seen some of this footage in the beginning, I went to Görlitz, which is super East Germany. Half of the city is in Poland, actually. So I went to visit a friend of mine who works in the theater there. And um, that was really fun. It's a really beautiful little city. Um, I know he's bored living there, but it's really gorgeous. And they call it Girlywood, actually, because a lot of movies are filmed there. A lot of movies that take place in Germany or sometimes also in Eastern Europe. So for example, um, most of the Grand Budapest Hotel was filmed there. So that was really interesting that he was pointing out things from the movie that were around. Um, and then we walked across the bridge and saw, um, or ate Polish food, and it's like a lot more inexpensive to do anything in Poland than it is in Germany, so that was awesome. I have Polish heritage, so I felt right at home eating there. <laughs> so that was fun. And then I saw my friend do, um, he's an opera singer as well, but his theater put on The Last Five Years, which is an American musical, but in German. <laughs> And I really like the music from that, uh, but I know it in English, so that was a little bizarre to hear it in German. Um, and just sort of notice, like, hmm, okay, those are interesting translation choices, but I enjoyed that. And then I went to Munich, which was eight hours on the train. I had an audition. <sighs> Drama about this audition. Um, it went really well. It was for a chorus position, uh, permanent course position in the smaller opera house there and uh, yeah probably shouldn't talk about the details about that actually um, but suffice it to say that I had reason to believe I was going to get that job and after sort of being led to believe that I ended up not getting it because they could not decide between two people and for kind of no reason at all they went with the other person so that was kind of heartbreaking um so yeah so onward uh, so i've had some job stress i've had some um extreme taxes stress these last few weeks and then my work schedule has just been crazy we had a premiere last weekend and we're getting ready to launch another premiere 
So we have our second dress rehearsal tonight, so it's just been constant, long, long rehearsals going back and forth to mice, back and forth to mice, back and forth to mice. Ah! So yeah, in the past two weeks, I think I've only had one full day off, uh, and I went hiking, that was on Monday, I went hiking, um, so that's why I didn't get any sewing done on that day. Um, but that was really great, I'm glad that I did that, it always just helps to get outside and sort of hike off some of the stress. <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, I have another day off tomorrow, so I will have time to edit this and do all of that. Um, the pattern is ready to go. Um, yeah, so I'm just sort of getting ready to wind down the season in Mainz and trying not to have a total panic about the fact that I have no idea what I'm doing next season, or really after June 20th, which is my last day of work. So, yeah. Um, that's life right now. Um, so I haven't quite been keeping up with some of my goals and expectations in terms of crafting or other things that I have been talking about the last few weeks, but, um, I am happy to report that I think I've adapted a little bit more of a flexible attitude with my, towards myself in that respect that, um, with all the stress, and I've also been very physically tired, I've been sleeping really badly, I don't know why, that I actually have been pretty gentle with myself and understanding, uh, which isn't something that I naturally tend to be good at. So that's progress, <laughs> that I've just been like, you know what, it's okay, you don't have to do anything super productive this afternoon, try to take a nap, you know, knit on something vanilla, just rest because otherwise I'll go crazy. So that's sort of been the state of things around here. Um, you know, life is like that sometimes, right? It just is. So anyway, I hope that you guys are doing well wherever you are. Um, do set your alarms for the After the Rain Socks if you're interested in that. I think we have 32 kits available, and if they do really well, we probably will do some pre-orders as well. And if you're just interested in the pattern, that will go live on Ravelry on Saturday also. So, on that note, I need to sign off and get my booty on the train to go to work. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in about two weeks time. So until then, take care, happy knitting. Um, I hope the weather is nice where you are and that you're able to get outside and enjoy it. So I will talk to you guys later. Bye. <laughs>